Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Mark Lesh. I am a teacher and an amateur artist. And if you've stumbled across this video, then welcome to my art studio slash garage. I will be hopefully teaching you in this video how to create some really neat abstract art paintings, uh, but doing it at a very kid-friendly level. We're gonna break it down step by step so that no matter the age, you can hopefully tackle this and create something really cool to show off at home or to your friends and family. So we're gonna break this down to three easy steps. We're gonna start with simple materials that you can hopefully find easily, cheaply, maybe just lying around the house to use to do this all. Second thing, we're gonna go over some basics of art so you have a little bit of just essential knowledge that you will need to really make this shine and sparkle. And then finally, we're gonna focus on the actual effects and techniques that we can pull off using really simple everyday materials to create something really poppin' and awesome for you. All right, so let's talk materials. First of all, gloves. You could wear them, you might not need to. We're using acrylic paint, so it's safe. You won't really need to worry about getting any bad chemicals on you if you're just using acrylic. Don't use oil paint. So gloves, they're good to use. You don't need to though. I'm using an Amazon box. I am not bothering with a canvas for this. I'm just using a piece of cardboard. Uh, that's all you need to use because art can be done on anything and it's cheap and you got a lot of it lying around the house Use it before you recycle it. Uh, it's a lot easier to throw away than a canvas And it's a lot cheaper to have on hand too to practice this sort of stuff So I coated it in some white paint. You're gonna need white acrylic paint I just use whatever is the cheapest biggest bottle I can find at the time and work with that So put two coats on let it dry a bit um, you'll still see some bumps, but this is for practice, okay? So white paint, acrylic, most important thing to lay on top of anything if it's not already coated. You buy a canvas at the store, it's gonna probably already be coated in two layers of acrylic paint. You don't need to do this, but I did paint it twice, just so you know. Now, paint, you got your white, you got your black, all right? And obviously, you need your three primaries. You need a blue, you need a red, and you need a yellow. Okay, so there's your paint. Okay, next up, your brushes. You don't need too much for this. All right, a couple big brushes, cheap to practice with, and maybe one or two nicer ones. These are cheap. I got this for, I think, $3, I think, at Michael's, and it's fine enough to work with. It's huge. Um, it doesn't need to be this big, but I just thought, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, I usually use a lot of finer brushes for my work. I have like probably 30, 40 brushes, um, but you don't need to use that many. Two or three is fine. You can even just use one brush, make that work. You could use a brush that you had lying around from an old painting job as long as it's all, all gunked up, okay? Uh, acrylic paint, you need your water cup, all right? You also need your paper towels because you're gonna make a mess. You're gonna need to wipe the brushes down. That's what you need for the basics, obviously. Most people can figure that out. But for effects, you might wanna use a putty knife like this or something that has uh, a hard, um, solid, flat uh, edge to it um, so that you can do some scraping, create some effects with this. Putty knife, good thing to use. Uh, bubble wrap or plastic wrap. That's a weird one, it's gonna work cool. Uh, we're gonna use that. And then tape. I got fancy frog tape. I would actually use painter's tape or masking tape, but my son has hidden it in his art supplies. Uh, so I don't know where it is. So I have my frog tape I keep hidden safe from him. This is the best stuff. This is the only thing I would recommend, honestly, if you're going to spend money on abstract art, you buy good frog tape. Uh, it's also perfect for other projects, and it will create the best uh, solid lines without making a mess. It even advertises it right there against painter's tape. Um, but it is good to use. So there's your stuff. All right, and let's get cracking with the basics. All right, you've got materials. Now let's talk some basic stuff before we start doing stuff. Uh, I want to talk math with you, which is probably not what you're thinking, but math is everywhere, and I teach math, so sorry, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm gonna break it down fast and simple. It's called the golden ratio, and what it is is, pick a corner, any corner, that's your favorite corner. Uh, top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. I don't care, pick one, that's what you're gonna focus on. It's called your focal point. Um, if I choose top right, for example, uh, what I hopefully achieve is uh, sort of my eyes wander across, coming up and around and swirl around, kind of like a whirlpool ending in the top right corner. I've done that already with one. 
I'll show you this guy here. Simple thing I did just for funsies. Hopefully we make something similar, maybe better. Um, that's my focal point. If you didn't see it, well, then I failed you. But hopefully you did. Um, you can see the outside corners are a little darker here. Uh, this is brighter, so I'm working with uh, you know the light versus the dark. Um, and what I did here is I created some effects here with this curving motion here. Um, just pot lid for that, just a spray paint. We're not using spray paint today, though. Um, and then these copper bars, if you notice, it's a little abstract. That's the point of it. Um, they kind of walk their way around here like a spiral effect. And hopefully your eyes land up there. If they didn't, I'm so sorry. I failed you. But hopefully we do a good job with it today. Uh, next thing to create good effects, your brush, you got to wipe it and clean it up every now and again. Uh, you can't keep using it over and over without either wiping it dry or wetting it uh, in a cup of water and then hopefully cleaning it as well. Uh, otherwise, you're going to muddy everything up. When you muddy everything, you lose all your good bright color. Uh, your lights and darks end up overlapping and now you don't have a focal point and then you don't have what makes the art look good. Um, finally, uh, before we talk about the actual stuff and show you it, colors to choose. Um, I said before, have a yellow, a red, a blue, have your basic primary colors, but we got to talk quick about the types you might want to use. I suggest for blue, a turquoise, uh, paired up with a nice light yellow, could be either yellow ochre, or I picked Naples yellow when I went into Michael's to get this. And then I chose, this is a tongue twister for some of you probably, Quinacra Dome Magenta. Um, it's my red I like. It's a bright one. It looks good. Um, turquoise is awesome. It's kind of like a chameleon. Um, it is a cool and a warm. Every color has a cool and warm to it. Um, I'm not going to talk that because you'll fall asleep. This will become an ASMR video. A few moments later. Now, lastly, just make sure you got a clean space. Uh, don't be painting on carpet. And have some. You put, put something down like newspapers before you start doing this. It can get a little messy, especially if you start throwing paint. Um, if you're a kid, make sure you have your parents' permission before you start any of this so that you don't get in trouble. Okay, let's start. All right, ready to start. One thing before we do the painting, uh, I neglected to remind myself that I need to sometimes make these a little lighter before I start putting them on. So I use these cheap little cups that I can get like at, you know, any any taco place basically um, for filling up salsa. Uh, I don't like using a plate, I use little cups. Uh, the red is very dark going on first time, which I made the mistake of just playing around with it just today. Uh, you wanna make it a little lighter, so add a little white to it. The turquoise is awesome, but it looks a little too dark if you just put it straight on. So I do mix up a little bit here just to get a little bit of a, a lighter color and tone to it. So now let's start. I'm gonna choose the top left corner here uh, to work with, and I'm gonna put white down there because I wanna make that my highlight. I wanna make that my focal point, and I'm gonna make this a yellow focal point. So let's get out the yellow. Let's put a little bit of yellow there. I'm gonna go ahead and brush some of the white around just to get like this whole area. Definitely it's gonna be lighter than everywhere else. I don't wanna get the yellow, there we go. Let's make it white all the way to here. Just kind of wipe the paint off so it gets a little bit. There we go. Because you want to make this whole area kind of lighter, darker down there. That's going to be lighter. Then, let's see. Let's put a little yellow here. I put right on usually to the canvas or to the board, whatever I'm doing. I'm going to put a little yellow everywhere, but I want to put more of the yellow there. So a couple dabs here. Let's get this on. It's going to look very yellowy, uh, which is fine. And I'm gonna just kind of get these going here. All right, and that actually looks a little better, unfortunately. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to darken that up. All right, I might change my focal point if this doesn't look right. All right, next up, I'm gonna get a smaller brush because I can't physically fit it in here. I'm gonna put the blue and the red, which looks a little more pinky right now here. I'm gonna put that in get that globbed on, and I'm gonna do some nice, just strokes here that are, and I'm gonna get a little bit there too. And you wanna just quickly just make like a Mario Kart infinity symbol here. Um, and I wanna just gently, very lightly, sweep it across there. I don't wanna to do too much. I like how it blends together. You see a little bit of the yellow blending with the red. Not too much. All right, I'm gonna wipe this dry. I can still use this. I don't need to wet it with uh, the water right now. That's not my not my thing right now. I just wanna get this on quick. And the red, which is now, or the blue rather, the turquoise, which is now very light compared to what it would have been. I'm gonna just put a little bit there. 
just dab it around a bit. And again, just very light brush strokes. I don't wanna make the brush strokes. Oh, I gotta be careful. I do not want a green yet. Turquoise doesn't look that great with green. Uh, I'm gonna add this lighter because I wanna make this, even though I don't want to, ooh, just gotta work with the paint. The paint doesn't wanna work with me though. I wanna make sure that I don't make it look too greenish right now. I'm gonna add like darker reds and everything. There we go, paint. You don't like, you don't like me today. There we go, that's good enough. I'm gonna blend this out here. Paint goes flying. Like I said, like I said, don't don't paint in an area where you care too much about what you have. All right, all right. Some pretty pretty broad brush strokes there. I'm gonna go back with this because it's still yellow, and I'm going to make some really. I'm gonna try to do that swoop. Remember that swirl effect? Not really what I love. And I'm gonna take the other side here. Yeah, well, it's a work in progress. See, now I got all this blue here. First step is done. It looks awful and muddy, but it is my base coat for putting the effects on the next step. So I'm gonna let this dry a bit. You saw it's not a pretty picture, but it will build up into something hopefully looks kind of neat. So give it about uh, two or three hours to dry or just do it the next day. This is what art looks like when you do it in layers. It's not gonna look great <laughs> at first, but when we build it up, this is just in the background and the rest is what you see. All right, so it's dry and we are ready to apply the effects. You already saw me use the paper towel to dab some brighter color onto it. It helps, kind of saves the uh, work if you feel like it's getting muddy. Uh, I lost some brush strokes, but uh, I gained some brighter patches, which are gonna look nice once I add some things to this. So you might see me use this a bit more. Probably not, I'll probably favor using uh, the bubble wrap and the uh, plastic wrap to add some cool little doodads to it. Uh, painter's tape is gonna be my main number one now. Uh, when I'm doing this, I'm going to block out geometric shapes to lay out all throughout here. And I may either use the brush or I may use the uh, putty knife to scrape on the color depending on if I wanna have it look like it's been brush, uh, brushed on or if I wanna make it look like it's a solid color, uh, this really helps to just make it so it looks nice. When I am using this here and I'm putting out the tape, uh, what I'm going to do is hopefully as I'm putting down lines and places, you wanna make sure, this is the part that makes it look nice, is you wanna make sure like, let's say I wanna do something with this edge here. I wanna make sure I really gently but firmly push down on the frog tape so that it's completely against all the different parts of your paint because if you've been doing abstract work like I did dabbing it on, there are bumps here which you may not be able to see uh, well, but there are definitely irregular uh, you know, hills and valleys in this. And if you don't really press this firm down onto it, then you may end up having your crisp line bleed through when you paint over it. So avoid it if you can, make sure this is on good. Um, that's why I said frog tape is probably better than masking tape or painter's tape. Um, I'm gonna probably use a filbert brush uh, because what I wanna do, I'm gonna be kinda creating some shadows along different spots. You're gonna see me do that to create like, pop out effects and going back down into depths of shadows. Um, I'm gonna use this to blend things out. I might put on with the flat brush here and then finish with this guy again, but you're gonna see me trying to blend things out to kinda like have it gently go from one plane and area to the next. Hopefully it looks good, so let's get started with it. One, two, three, four.
If you're still here, then you are a patient person. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned a little bit from the video. I tried to show you everything from start to finish so you could see my foibles and follies and see how I tried to problem solve things and how the work I did changed over time. Hopefully you can do this at home uh, on the cheap, especially if you're a kid, you don't have to spend a lot of money to pull off what I accomplished, hopefully decently halfway. Um, if you do want to spend a little extra money, obviously the canvas will be a lot better than using cardboard, a lot easier to apply paint. And if you have a little more access to color choices and you can't just pick one of each of the primaries, I might add in something like a crimson because you can add a lot more bold, vibrant color with it, especially adding with the yellow, you can make really cool oranges. Uh, I like the magenta as a starter, but crimson also adds an extra little pop and flare to things. So I hope you have fun painting and if I make more videos, hopefully they help you too. See you later.